<laughs> this one got a lot of press because, it, um, and, and <laughs> I, I, I titled this the We Should Have Seen This One Coming Department of Security Now. Uh, and, and like every news outlet had covered this because it was just so juicy. As, uh, and the headlines were similar to as many as 90% of smart TVs are probably vulnerable to wireless hacking via rogue TV signals. And, and you know, we and this podcast and our listeners could almost anticipate this because we've been talking about how how anything that interprets a complex signal is is in is very difficult to secure well look what's happened to smart TVs you know th as we know they are computers and you know they're smart and and so so a, re, a, a Swiss cybersecurity researcher, Raphael Scheel, uh, who works for one consult, showed a proof of concept attack using two different fully patched Samsung TVs. And this is not to single Samsung out at all. It, that's what he used. Um, it, and it is extremely likely that most, if not all, smart TVs are vulnerable. And the scary thing is that they can probably be taken over by broadcasting a malicious video image. That is, you know, in the same way that, for example, the 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 media interpreta the the media the the multimedia interpreter in android phones has had so much problems because you know their little edge cases were found in its operation similarly uh, in this case there is a web server that is always listening in the background and an over the air signal can exploit a vulnerability that exists in the web server in these Samsung smart TVs to allow root privilege access and an attacker to then get the TV to essentially reach out onto the internet in order to make the network that it's on vulnerable. So this is this is not good. So it's not just for example, the the Vault 7 weakness that we learned about, the, the so-called weeping angel attack, where we, we and we talked about it a few weeks ago, we said, yes, but that's a physical local attack exploit where you would need to stick a malicious USB dongle into the TV in order for it to take over. Well, now we've got one where just receiving a signal over the air can do it. Now, this particular exploit used the European digital broadcasting standard, which is DVB-T, uh, which is the predominant di uh, digital over the air uh, system in Europe, uh, comparable to our ATSC, wh which is our, you know, uh, HD o o over the air technology, um, but it's the same. So it's not that DVB-T is vulnerable where ATSC isn't. It's just that this Swiss researcher used what he had handy, which was his own local digital over the air system. There's no doubt that you can do the same thing over ATSC and any of the actually probably any of the total of four different standards that exist globally. So this, again, you know, our takeaway is a TV like other IoT devices really needs to be segmented. The, 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 it's just, it's, you know, where we are in the world today, 
these devices are not secure. PCs, Macs, Windows, and, and even Linux machines have, due to their, their history and, and, and just the nature of the way they've come together over a much greater period of time, have vastly more mature security and, and similarly, I would argue, vastly more sensitive data on them than, for example, your typical light bulb. And you want to keep them that way. I mean, you, the, uh, IoT devices have vastly less mature security and vastly less sensitive data. So we really have two very different classes of devices. We have very secure systems with with much more sensitive data in our PCs and much less secure systems with much less sensitive data and much much less need for sensitive data in IoT devices. They th these these separate classes should really be separate security perimeters. They, they, they should not be on the same network. The, the default currently is for them to be on the, you know, on the same network. Uh, it's predictable that in the future we will see routers that make strong network segmentation, truly secure segmentation, easy. But for our audience, for, for those who are who are willing to do it, we, we already know we have the tools now to do that with things like the Ubiquiti uh, edge router, which can create separate, seg separate segmented networks where they can't see each other. And, and the problem is that smartphones are kind of in between. You, you often want to use your – you want to control your IoT devices with your smartphone, yet it also does have arguably a lot of sensitive inf information on it. I would suggest that somebody who is really security conscious m should consider maybe a, um, a, a, a retired smartphone – to use on the IoT side that you have scrubbed, or you know, and just like you know, you 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 you've um, uh, restarted it from scratch. You you've scrubbed it, wiped it completely, and then use that as your IoT interface device over on the IoT I network. If you're a security conscious, you shouldn't be using IoT, right? <laughs> True. Well, exactly. I mean, I mean our, our favorite our our favorite acronym is I D I O T. You yeah. know, I don't I O T. Well, or, yeah. Or I mean, if, if if you're really that worried, you'd be crazy to to use these devices. They don't add that Correct. much convenience. The problem is, as you point out, the TV. Everybody's got one of those smart TVs, so that's right. not and, really an I O T device. That's just a an appliance. Well, it, it is well okay. Well, no, I it guess. is an IoT device, I mean, but it's an internet connected appliance, and people don't get it for the IoT capability. They get it as a TV, but it just happens to have internet on it. Right, and and DVRs are are you know D DVRs are now on the internet and doing things, and we've seen instances where DVRs are like like for example, DVRs were uh, uh, being attacked by, by the Mirai botnet. So there's an example of, you know, you, 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 I guess my, my point is that these non PC devices are less security mature. People do want to have them in their home. And if you, if you are concerned about security, then taking the time to put them on their own network segment makes sense. And absolutely. And I, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, like think about where your valuables are. Your, your, largely your valuables are in your PC. And most PCs don't have a need to be messing with your light bulbs. So they could be separated systems. I just sort of think that's the right way to think about it. I, I'm not sure I'd agree with it, with you that the issue is they're not mature. They are certainly for like, you know, some things, but those Samsung TVs are running Linux. It's not that they're not mature operating systems. It's that they're not paying any attention. Right. Right. <laughs> really? I mean, right. Microsoft had to be forced to pay attention. They didn't pay attention either at first. Yeah. It's expensive to pay attention. Right. Yeah. 